yes, that's a very jobby. Now let's have a look. Does it give me the option? Uh, what's that? Invite friends to watch. I don't want that. Okay, so that's chats. Don't want that. Okay, are you on there? So try coming on live because it's it is saying on there. Bring them onto camera. So as soon as you click onto my live feed, and I oh, see your live feed. Go onto my Facebook. I'm on it. Scroll down, you'll see my live Facebook. Should show me as being live now. Yep. Let me just tell everybody who's on it because there's already four people. Just bear with me because we're just working this out. Um, you can't see my live feed on my Facebook. Nope. That's bizarre. And I'm you're on a friend the... of yours, but are you a friend of mine? Well, I, I, I would hope so. I get most disappointed with you if I'm not. I think you, you, if we're on each other's friends list. Now, if, I, I, I've got you as a, as a friend. Yeah. But have you got me as a friend? I, mean, I, I don't know whether it works. Which way. profile you got? Because you've got two. Um, I'm the one where, where there's a picture of me looking, uh, standing at the election. Looking rather dashing, that one. Yeah, we're friends. Okay. Um, so what do I, let me see if I can invite you. So I'm on your timeline, right? At the moment. Yep. If you scroll down my timeline, let me just search for uh, you. I need to renew it. Ah. So what do I do now? Click for more. Yeah, go on to it as if you're watching me. But you might want to turn your volume off so you don't hear me. For now. Until we've got you invited in. I've got a time lag. Well, you might have. But once you're on there, I can invite you in. Where's he gone? He's hung up on me. Right, while I'm just getting Robin sorted out, hopefully, if you lot can all hit share and invite people in, I'm just going to search for him, actually. Let me see if I can find him. Okay, so it's this one. Let's invite him in. I'll say hi to everybody now. Just while, give me, just bear with me a minute because I need to get, I need to get Robin on here because obviously, this is the only way that we can do this. Once he's on my video, hopefully. Did you get a notification inviting you inviting you to watch? I watch. Inviting you to watch. Uh, yeah. On Facebook. So where would I have where I, where would I have got that? In your notifications. What? In your notifications. So if you look at your notifications. Uh, right, so you see where you get a little red thing that tells you that somebody has done something. If you click onto that, you should be able to come live onto my video. And that then should give me the option to bring you onto camera. That then should give me the option to bring you onto camera. But until I see you on there, and at the moment, you're not showing as even watching my video. Okay, well, you, you need to be on my video, I think, for me to be able to invite you in. Tony Holyoke. Yes, sir, a, a rehearsal was going to be planned, but unfortunately, I was running late. So I take full responsibility for that. Just, just click onto the video. So you're not showing up on mine as, as we've been on here. Now that's really bizarre. And have you enlarged it so it shows that you're on there? 
Yeah, so if you click onto the video, it sort of enlarges on your computer, doesn't it? Okay, so why is it not showing me the view on that? That's really bizarre. I mean, I can't really mistake you. You've got a handsome picture and a English Democrat sign, so I can't really miss it. See, I get the option with everybody else coming up. It gives me the option to bring them on, bring them on camera. But you're not even showing us watching my video. <laughs> I like the way they're all going, typical blonde. There's no accounting here for the fact that there could be an error on your part here, Robin. I'm getting the full flack for this one. And for you. <laughs> and you don't have the app on your phone, do you? What? The Facebook app. Um, it doesn't give me an option to actually invite you on. Um, let me just try again. Right, let's just try now. I've just sent you an invitation. Did you get anything in? Well, that's just really odd because you're not showing as even being on my Facebook, on the video at all. That's, that's well, no, I don't, know, I don't know about Jinx. I think it's, I'm just wondering, where, are you on, what search engine do you use? I'm just wondering whether it might be better on Google Chrome. Type a comment. You see where you can see there's like a little bubble where you could type a comment. Yeah. Just just put a comment on there, anything, so that I see where you because that comment should come up and I should get a notification to show that comment, which should then show me that you're there. There you go. Right, you haven't got the sign there for me to invite you in. I think it might be because you're on Firefox. I'm just wondering whether you might be... Do you have Google Chrome on your phone? No. Um, <clears throat> and you don't have it on your phone itself. <clears throat> so, so if you use Google Chrome on your computer, I think that gives you that. And if you use your phone and you're watching via your phone, then via your mobile phone... I can invite you in. Because on others, it comes up, bring them on camera, it gives you the option, right? Which I can see. But when I see where your comment is, there is nothing there for me to bring you on camera. Yet yeah, still no camera beside of yours to, to bring you on at all and if I click onto your picture it just gets delete comment pin comment like comment or block and I don't want to block you not yet I think you might need to um, I think you're gonna have to, to use Google Chrome I think instead of Firefox. <laughs> well, you just so you just literally um you, you you put on Google Chrome, you type in Facebook login, you log in and you you're straight onto your Facebook through that. And then you just come onto the video that way.
Uh, well, I'm going to have a look, see if we can do a recording on Skype. And we'll do it that way if we have to. Not that I'm aware of, no, you can't, it's not like you, YouTube you can, you can put that straight out and people can come and watch you on there, but you can't on Skype. So it'd have to be like a, a live record, we'd have to do it, pre-record it, and then put it up as a recording, but I wanted people not to have the opportunity to sort of ask you anything they wanted. No, not without you having Facebook on your phone, which is the only other way you could do it, is if you've got Facebook on your mobile phone, you literally just go onto my Facebook on your phone, and that gives me the option to bring you on. I just to let everybody know, just bear with us, right? Because I know this looks like we're we're fannying around, but we we do. I really want to give. Well, we are fannying about. I'm going to put Robin on loudspeaker, but I'm trying. I wanted to get Robin on here so people could ask him questions. Um, unfortunately, Robin's not. He's a bit of a technophobe. Is that Robin? There is, but that's not what's stopping us. It's the fact that if you look at the side of, well, you can't see what I'm looking at. On other people's, it gives me the option because they're watching via their phone, right? And because they're watching it on their phone, on Facebook, on their phone, it gives me the option to bring them on camera. And you don't, you say you don't have Facebook on your phone. Um, well, should we, I'll tell you what, the only other thing to do then is we're going to have to, we'll rebook this and, because I do want people to have an opportunity to actually ask you a few questions and for an opportunity for you to explain what I'm trying to explain so that we can, so they know what you're, what it is you're actually doing. But maybe what I'll have to do is do a pre-record on Skype at some point. Well, how did you set, how did you set it up in the first place so it worked? Well, I, I set it up on my computer, I go live, and, and then is anybody... All, is it just ordinary, um, I mean, ordinary, ordinary stuff, is it? Yeah. You know, the ordinary Facebook? Yeah. But I use Google Chrome, I don't use Firefox. It does, because I can't go live. If I use Internet Explorer, and I log in via Internet Explorer, I can't go live via Internet Explorer. I can only go live if I go via Google Chrome. Does that make sense? Well, there's not much you can do, so I think we're going to have to rearrange and do a... Um, I'm going to have to give you a, a very quick lesson <laughs> in the next in the next day or two. Give you a quick lesson on how well, to. Shall we record something on um, on on, on um, Skype and then you can. Um... Well, but, yeah, that's a new to me, so I've got to figure out how to do recording. So I've got to learn this. Um, Are you on Skype? I mean, I've got you on loudspeaker on phone, so I suppose to a degree, if if people can hear you. Well, we'll give it a shot, and hopefully, fingers crossed, there won't be too much feedback for people and too much noise. Yes, so, put your phone somewhere close to uh, your system, and then. Um, right, hang on then. My phone is now close to my system. So everybody can hear that, can they? Right, I? I'm hoping so. If what I'm going to do, so bear with me. Can uh, there's? 
can every single person on here give a thumbs up to, sh to let me know that you can actually hear Robin when he speaks? Robin, would you mind singing? Singing? <laughs> yeah, would you mind giving you us a quick tune? Oh, all right then. Okay, so I'm getting the thumbs up that people can hear you. So that's... Okay, I can see, I can see that because I've got the image. Yeah, well, there you go. So we're going to have to we'll do it this way, okay? Okay. <clears throat> uh, people say, go ahead on the phone. We will be patient. <laughs> so that's good all to right. know. Uh, bear in mind that there's a time lag from what's appearing on the... Um, yeah, I can hear you've got a slight Facebook. time lag. I can I can hear that. I'm really, really sorry about that. I don't think there's anything we can do to overcome that, I'm afraid. Um, yep. So okay, I'm going to see if I can uh, make my partner into, into making me a cup of tea while I'm doing this, because I'm cheeky well, that way. Well, I'm so, right, so let's get this game started. If we can ask everybody who's on here, there's 23 people on here, please invite people in, tag people, um, share it out onto pages and ask people to come and watch it. My page is an open page, so anybody can come on and watch it, because I don't care, I have nothing to hide. Um, so anybody can come and watch it. So just invite as many people as you can to get as many people on here whilst I've got Robin on the phone to do this. So for those who aren't aware, Robin is taking, now correct me if I'm wrong here, Robin, but is it the government you are taking through the High Courts or is it Theresa May you are taking through the High Courts? Well, it's, uh, we, we've uh, put in as the defendants, the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State for exiting the European Union. The government lawyers said that the correct defendant was the Secretary of State for, for exiting the European Union before, uh, and they, they wrote to, it, to me before uh, Theresa May decided off her own back to ask for uh, the extension. Um, and so I thought that um, as she had done that, we'd probably find that, that when we actually got to court, they'd say we got the wrong person. So I um, thought it was better to put the, both of them in. It, uh, it uh, means, of course, that I sort of hedge, hedge the bets as to uh, who is the proper defendant. But okay. It, we're not, we're not, I suppose in a sense, we're not really, as far as the law is concerned, we're probably not actually suing Theresa May herself, although it would be rather nice to do so. Um, what we're, who we're, we're suing is her office as Prime Minister. Okay, so... So that so basically what you're doing is you're you're making sure that one way or another you get your man in that court. No matter what happens, you get the right person in that in the high court. Yes. So okay. uh, in effect, the the simple answer to your question would be we are suing the government. Okay. So in suing the government, now my understanding that I've been kind of trying to explain to people over the last couple of weeks, and I don't know how well I've explained it. And I, w I do want to make it very clear, there are 27 people, I, I want more people, and I know this is my backup account, that if it wasn't, I'd have 50, 60 people on already. Um, but please hit the share button, please invite people in, because I think this is, this, this should be front page news. This should be the penultimate thing that everybody's talking about. And I'm a little confused, Robin, I don't know about you, I've seen people pushing out for UKIP, I've seen people pushing out for Full Britain. Um, independent standing for the, the EU elections. But the truth of it is, we left the EU legally on the 29th, and the extension that she has given, she has put in place, she's done so. Is it unlawful or illegal, or does that mean the same thing? No, it basically means the same thing. Um, the, the, the point is that uh, the Gina Miller case, uh, is, is the sort of background to this in many in many respects. Um, one, one, one way it's the background is that, that she made it so that, or her case made it so that the government had to get an act of parliament through uh, in order to be allowed to serve the Article 50 notice. That act of that act of parliament is the EU Notification of Withdrawal Act 2017. It's a very short act. Uh, anybody who looks at it will see immediately that what it what it does is it, it says specifically that it, it empowers the Prime Minister to serve notice of, to, or on the EU to withdraw the United Kingdom from the European Union. It doesn't give her power to do anything else whatsoever, just serve notice to withdraw us. And that's a 
and that's uh, a crucial point because the um, Gina Miller case also makes it clear uh, that once you've got an act of parliament in an area of, of uh, law, it, it completely displaces the uh, royal prerogative because ministers only have two bases on which they can uh, be acting in their official capacity. The first basis is that there's a statute uh, and an act of parliament which says that ministers shall have power to decide this and that. Um, and then they have power to decide it in the way that the Act that, that sets out. Um, and the second way, that, which is the sort of um, default position, uh, is that uh, they are acting as ministers of the Crown. In other words, they are acting with the royal prerogative, the remnants of the powers of kings from the Middle Ages. Um, Don't they call that something like Henry VIII rule or Henry VIII law or something like that? Well, um, the thing that that um, people people who are talking about this sort of situation they talk about Henry VIII clauses, um, and I'm not really quite sure why they call them Henry VIII clauses, but um, those are those are um, clauses where the, where the minister is given power to decide things. So, um, but there's often some sort of restriction on it. Uh, I mean, an example of a Henry VIII clause in this case is um, one of the arguments that the government's trying to put forward, which is that there was a further act with the European, coming out of the European Union, which is the EU Withdrawal Act 2018. Um, and in that act, which is basically about uh, setting up what should happen when we come out, you know, what, what the new legal position should be, it's a, it's a a transitional arrangements act, um, and what they, what they, one of the clauses in that is that there can be a regulation which uh, both houses of parliament have to approve, which will change a date that they've set in, the, in that act, which they called exit dates, but they've got themselves into a muddle with their own spin there, because um, exit date in that act, if you actually read the act. You can see that it, that act isn't actually about saying when we're coming out. It's only about transitional arrangements. And that means that exit day as set out in the 2018 Act isn't actually necessarily the day that we we actually come out of the EU. Um, and uh, so they passed this regulation changing um, the exit date. And they changed it to two dates. Um, which was the 12th of April and um, the date of June, um, the, the, the problem for them there um, is that that actually is contrary to what, what the law says about what can be done with those kind of regulations. You know, say, well, what the law says is that it, there can't be a choice. Mm -hmm. It has to be a specific. Well, two people have put questions in. One person has, oh, bear with me, because I just want to make sure I read it properly. So Michelle Connolly says, Robbie, will we ever leave the EU as she voted leave? Well, so, so what, what, um, what we're saying in this case uh, is that the proper notice was served following the Gina Miller case. Mm -hmm. uh, and that notice under Article 50 is, is uh, expressly for two years. Uh, that expired on the 29th of March at, at um, 11 p.m. And so the, the basic legal position, um, and I, I think I don't think you'd find any lawyers disagree with what I'm about to say. The basic legal position is when when your notice expires, regardless of what it's about, whether it's you know, you're leaving employ, employment, uh, giving notice in a business partnership, or giving notice to leave. Um, uh, uh, tenancy, as long as it's done properly, um, been, been uh, done in accordance with whatever agreement or arrangement it is, once the notice expires, you're automatically out. You know, you're so basically, this is this, so, 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 so what you're saying is if we look at it as a, as a notice of quit of eviction order for, for being moved out of a property, once that landlord serves you with a notice of quit. And you've the got the day. The difficulty with using the notice to quit is that there's been a lot of um, 
uh, of statutes which have tinkered with the basic concept. Okay. Uh, so you, you're you, you, you're not automatically you can't you can't be automatically evicted the moment you're able to quit um, from a from a residential property um, expires. Um, and even with a, a business property, there are all sorts of restrictions on what the landlord can do. Um, whereas uh, the, I think an easier one is you serve notice to leave employment on a particular day. Let's say you've got to give two months notice. You give two months notice um, on the day after your month, your um, period of notice has expired. If the employer has asked, uh, told you to carry on working right up to the end of your notice, on the day afterwards, he can't make you come in. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you're yeah. no longer an employee. It's automatic. Okay. At the end of your notice, you have ceased to be an employee. And, and so note, the idea of notice is, is a, a, an old idea. It's been well embedded in, in law. Um, it's, there's nothing radical about saying that at the end of your notice uh, period, you know, whatever arrangement is you've got comes to an end. And so automatically, at the end of our notice, we, we would be out. Uh, and that is unless um, the, there is some reason why, why that shouldn't be so. And so obviously the government's trying to say um, that, um, that they've got this regulation and that's, that might have an effect on whether we're actually out, um, and they also they also try to argue uh, they've argued basically three unlesses as it were. <laughs> One was the regulation, and it's not necessarily in any particular order. Another was um, that uh, Theresa May had the prerogative power to um, uh, not only tell the EU that she wanted extra time, but also to agree at once. Um, once it was offered. Um, but, but was she within her rights to do that? Well, I don't think she was. And this is and why I you're going to the High Court. I, 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 I saw on your uh, page you had posted up that link I did. to her being interviewed. Uh, oh, last she week. squirmed in that, didn't she? She was not a happy bunny in that at all. No, she wasn't. And, and the reason for that is because she's having, she was forced to admit that she hadn't basically thought through the law. She just decided she wanted extra time. She, I think she'd fallen out with um, her cabinet over it, and she just went off and did it without, it sounds like, without consulting the, the government's chief lawyer, the uh, attorney general. Um, so, so basically, she has she's decided that she's going to do this, um, and um, she's now uh, one of the things that they're trying to claim is that, that she's got the prerogative power to do that on her own. You know, she's not 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 um, as part of the ca a cabinet decision or anything, just Prime Minister on her own having prerogative power. Because I'm, I'm a right in saying that they, they basically had a discussion and people gave her opinions, but nobody actually made any votes. If somebody else has asked a question, Karen Kelly said, I can only see part of the question because she's obviously put quite a long question. She says... When you take them to court and win, what will happen to them? Will they be prosecuted? Um, that's one question. So, no, uh, nothing will, probably, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, probably nothing will happen to the individuals concerned. Um, but what we're asked, what we've asked the court to do is to, to is basically to confirm that we're out. Uh, and the way of asking that is that we, we get the court to declare that we're out. Okay. Somebody else um, has said, when when will we know if the case is to be heard? Okay. So uh, in a judicial review, um, we there are basically two um, st stages to it. And we're, we're towards the end of the first stage. Um, the, fir the, the first stage... Um, ends when, when the court grants permission um, for the judicial review process to go ahead. Um, and um, so what, what we've done is um, followed a, 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 to some extent a standard procedure. Um, back in February, I could see that it looked like um, the government was going to behave illegally mm -hmm. um, over this. And um, or at any rate, it, it, 
was looking like it was on the cards. So I wrote um, the, the very first thing you're supposed to do when um, people bring you to a review. I wrote a protocol letter, which was a sort of formal letter complying with the civil procedure rules. Um, and in that, I made it clear that um, um, I, I was uh, saying that the, for there to be any extension, um, there had to be an act of parliament in advance authorising the Prime Minister to ask for an extension um, and, and or to agree it. Right? Yeah. Uh, the government lawyers wrote back so that there's no possible argument that they didn't receive it. So you know they uh, got it. They can't deny now that it didn't turn up. Yeah, and they Lost in the they, post, post, they, I'll get it. Exactly, they, but they didn't properly engage with the argument. Um, they, they, they said several things were basically sort of diversion tactics. Um, and actually, in my experience with government lawyers, that that's not unusual, that's the way they behave. Um, and um, I, um, at that point, it didn't look like we were going to, there hadn't actually seemed to be any particular evidence that we were going to go for an extension. But then a few days later, um, we heard that Theresa May had asked for an extension. And I then wrote straight away saying that that was illegal. Uh, I didn't get an answer to that, um, but they're not, they're not denying that they've had that, by the way. And I think um, there, there, there has been, I, I've seen a couple of people in, in the Lords that have kind of raised this subject, but and we, you and I spoke about that earlier. Before I go to that bit, somebody else has, has, has said, what is the status of the case? I, I suppose by that they mean how far along are you? Do you have a date for when it's going? Into, yes. so, so, I, so I was explaining what the procedure is, and mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's part of that answer. Uh, that question. Okay. Um, so, so um, uh, then we got to the 29th of March. Uh, at that point, it was clear that um, um, that the that the Curie's May was going to try and keep us in, and I I say illegally. Um, so, so what I did was I obviously prepared all the paperwork to issue straight away, um, and um, I served the government's lawyers with the papers. I thought, I thought it, as we were just coming up to the 1st of April, it ought to be before noon on the, on the 1st of April, as um, appropriate for um, them, them behaving so foolishly. Um, and then uh, I issued the um, actual proceedings on the 2nd. Uh, I went up to um, the High Court and personally issued it, and then I, went, I personally went round and personally served the, um, the government lawyers with the issued papers. Um, and that then sets the, the clock ticking for them to have to put in a, an enlargement service form and their legal arguments within 21 days. And um, they, they, they agreed that the 21 days was going to expire um, on the 17th of April um, because um, they, uh, they had had prior notice. Um, and, I, and I suspect also they didn't fancy working over um, the Easter break. Um, so they, they undertook to the court to let us have it by them, and they did. Um, so we then got there the, in judicial review proceedings, they call it a, a defence, but they call it the grounds of resistance. Um, and uh, we got their grounds of resistance. Um, and we've we then uh, served a re reply to those grounds of resistance, um, and so we're we're basically ready for the court to do one of two things, which is either to grant permission, and then we and to set the date for um, the judicial review hearing, or they could do what they did with the Gina Miller case, which is to do uh, they call it a rolled up um, hearing, where where we get the, both the permission stage and the actual trial heard at the same time. Um, and if you were to compare us with the Gina Miller case in terms of timing, we are about five weeks away from a hearing. So fingers crossed in the next five weeks. So what happens in the in the meantime of, with regards to what Theresa May is doing right now with with the fact that she's now liaising with Labour to try and rush a deal through? I know she is, yes, that's what that's I've been hearing too. Because that's what it looks like to me. Because clearly, she must know that you, because 
in truth, if this got to the High Court, and I, I've asked you this question before, and I know you've given me the answer, but for those who are on here who haven't got the answer, if you was to get this to court, what percentage of chance do you have? How how winnable is this case? Um, well, pretty much every lawyer that um, um, has looked at it and commented to me um, or to um, my barrister who's um, drafted the... Um, detailed submissions has said that, that it's, a, it's a strongly arguable case and, and uh, in fact probably one of the most senior people to say that is a retired Lord Justice of Appeal and I was a Court of Appeal judge, um, Sir Richard Aikens, and he said it was strongly arguable. Which I did read in the newspaper but we I have noticed this is something else other people have noticed because people are not aware of this which is why I wanted to do this tonight and, we're, and to be fair we've got 75 people on here I hope 75 people share this video out and, and invite their friends to go and check it out as well. So it's not being widely reported in the media because obviously if they report it and people know, then you would have 17.5, 17.4 million people would be putting their hands in their pockets and saying, I'll throw a fiver towards it to help you. Well, the other thing but you, really... you do need money to fight. To, to do this, it's going to cost money. And I know you, Robin, personally, so I know that you will put some of your own money where your mouth is because you are a man who believes in, if you believe in something and you know it's right, I know you're not afraid to do that. But you can't pay for this whole thing on your own. Now, I know you've raised some funds, but you're not, you're not there yet where you're not hitting the target of what you need. So we really do need people to help as much as, the, as possible. Yes, we do, um, Tony, you're, you're right. Um, in the Gina Miller case, um, just to give people a, an inkling of the scale of the, the issue that we've got to get ready to face, in the Gina Miller case, the whole case, uh, not just the High Court, but also the Supreme Court, um, costs a bit over 1.2 million. Um, and, I think it was uh, 1.2 million. Well, obviously, that wasn't, that, they, they, weren't, they weren't hit with that all straight away. Mm -hmm. um, so we're able to do what we're doing at the moment, but we are going to need more money as the case goes on, um, and that's absolutely certain. Uh, and we've got to bear in mind that this is really is a one-shot um, case. You know, there's a one-shot one-shot chance of getting us out using the law. Yeah, um, and, so the, and got, this is we've, we've got, got to, to fight it. it. We've got not only have we got to fight it, we need those funds to be able to fight it, and we've got to win it. We've got to win it. And, and, and realistically, you know, I'm going to, in this case, we're going to be up against, and we already, in fact, are up against the government's top lawyer, um, who is um, Sir James Eady, you can see. Uh, he, he was the one that they produced to fight the Gina Miller case. He, he is their top man. Uh, and um, he, you know, he, he's already put in the government, he's, he's the one who's put in the government's defence. To be fair, though, he fought the Gene Miller case and lost. So we yeah. kind of want him to fight yeah. this case and lose again. Well, I, I, I was joking with somebody. That he, 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 before the Gene Miller case, he, he wasn't knighted. He got knighted for losing the Gene Miller case. Um, perhaps he'd be a lord after he's finished this one. Yeah, well, they'll bump him <laughs> up somewhere. They've got to give him a job to do. I know there are a couple of people on here who have donated. So those who have already donated... Honestly, genuinely appreciate that. Um, why can't the people not put a no confidence vote in the Member of Parliament? They are too. Is it, the trouble is, if people are writing quite long questions and it's not letting me see all of the questions, so I can't put the rest of that in. But I don't think this is about a vote of no confidence because the chances are, if you do a vote of no confidence, we're going to end up still with another Remainer in place because the only people that are going to be able to stand are going to be another Tory, aren't they? Unless we have a general election. That, that will not affect uh, what, um, what is happening. Um, uh, well, the way I, I look at it is, you know, we, 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 we've tried politics, effectively. We, yep. We've tried um, not only the, the electoral process, but also the referendum. We voted to come out. Um, and if you were just looking at England, actually we voted by quite a large margin to come out. Um, that that was a a, a, um, a democratic exercise where more people voted um, than almost 
anything else. Uh, and the, the margin of people voting to come out was far more than you get voting for any government. Um, and, uh, and yet then we've got stuck in the whole parliamentary process and the Remainers who dominate Parliament, both in the House of Commons and the House of Lords, have then basically used the opportunity to start causing trouble. Um, and uh, we're, we're then left in this situation where um, I think the law is that we have come out, uh, but at the same time the, the whole discussion is occurring as if we haven't. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, w what's going to happen if we if we if we if we hadn't fought this case or or we don't succeed? It is that there will be um, some sort of arrangement which will be cooked up by people in Parliament to sell out the people to keep us in. You know, of course, it will, it will be so-called Brino yeah. in name only. Yep, um, we'll still be in the at, custom union at right. most. Uh, Everything I, that I, they I told us we were still what they're actually working at is trying to have a second referendum. Yeah, um, I think so. So, you know, I, I, I think if we don't succeed in this case, um, or, or can't take it all the way, or whatever causes us the problem, we are we are going to be in a situation where um, it's not going to succeed through politics, um, and uh, we, you know, if we take the EU election. People are talking as if that might make a difference. Well, it can't possibly make any difference. There's yeah. absolutely no way it makes any difference. It, it, you're not you're not electing people to uh, a parliament that has any role in deciding whether we're in or out. The European Parliament has no role in that. Um, so even if we were to wind up, which you can't really, from the, from um, given, given the electoral system that, that there is for the EU ele elections, for the Hong system. I've just noticed uh, another question. Every single seat, you know, they, it's, you still couldn't actually do anything for that. No, no. The only thing you could do is keep going in there and moaning about the fact that we voted to leave. Yeah, yeah, so you can moan do, a lot, do you know what I mean? And, and to do it. Get paid an awful lot and a large, big, fat salary for going in and moaning about well, the fact that we voted to leave. But there are people on here, so so just so those that are asking, um, Jennifer, Lindsay, Ellis, Bodek and Michelle Connolly asking how to donate. Now, there's two places to donate. There's www.engdemengdem.org and there is somewhere else, but you, which you did tell me, and I failed to write yes, it. Probably the simplest um, one to go to is englishdemocrats.party. Okay, so if I'm right, I'm just going to type that in here, Robbie, because I want people to be able to find it. So, English, all one word, yeah? English, no, that's one word. Dot party. There you go. Right, so I've popped that link in there for those that are asking how to donate. Um, somebody said, didn't the BBC say to Robin, once he gets a court date, they'll cover it? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> well, in fairness, in fairness I, uh, there have been a lot of people complaining to the BBC about the fact that they haven't covered this. Um, by this stage in the Gina Miller case, you could hardly turn on the BBC without hearing something about Gina Miller and her case. Yeah. Of course, the, the Remainers within the BBC, who so dominated and dominated all the media, um, they are, um, you know, they, 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 they don't want to cover this. They don't, they don't want us to be able to raise the money, and also they don't want parliamentarians who are thinking about what's going on to be aware that, that, that there is the probability that we're actually out. Um, because obviously, the, the, for instance, the sort of deal that we're hearing that um, Corbyn and May may come up with um, next week, um, that couldn't can't be done uh, if we're out, True. Uh, because the, 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 their arrangements would, would be saying that we we need to go back in again. Um, and one of the things that Article Fifty says is that, you, that once a state is out, it can only go back in again under Article Forty Nine, which is the ordinary application process that um, a country like Turkey, for example, was going through, um, although they, I think that, that comes to an end. 
Okay. Um, and other countries that have, have gone through that process, all the uh, former Iron Curtain Eastern Bloc countries have, have gone through that process. Um, the fact is, we voted the. We were told we were leaving on the 29th of March. We were told not once, not twice, but countless times. And I, I think. Um, and there's Bill nothing they, they, they shouldn't be able to do this. What this what they what they're doing right now really is unlawful. It's and and if you can't, I mean, it's for not, me, it's, 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 it's undemocratic. Yeah, it is. And, it's a dictatorship uh, now. And and I and I'm saying uh, unlawful, and I think that that is. All I'm trying to say about about the unlawful point is you, you can never be absolutely certain that something's unlawful until you've got the court to say so. But I think there's a very strong argument that we that, that we are actually out, legally speaking. Um, but to actually tie that off, we've got to get the court to declare it as such. It's just part of the, it's part of the, the the way that our constitution works. Our constitution is a constitution of law. So, what do what is it right now? If we because we've got ninety six people on here right now, so of those ninety six people, um, if we could, if we could really, really sort of ask anything, what what would be the one thing that you need, really, right now that would help you to ensure that when you get this to court, you achieve and take it. The whole way, and it really comes down to you need donations. Uh, I, I think that's right, Tony. I mean, we we, we do need donations. Um, we we need to um, get together a, a team uh, of uh, barristers. We need to have a QC um, so that we can um, front it once we once we, we're going to have a hearing. Um, and I've been making all the arrangements to um, ensure that we can do all that. Um, but in the end, it, it will at least partly depend on how much money we can raise. And, and of course, that's, I think, really why um, BBC and the rest of them don't want to publish anything about this case, because they want to make it as difficult as possible to raise the money. Um, and um, I think it's as simple as that in the end. Mm. So and this is why I personally, I mean, I don't I don't want to keep this going sort of like for hours. I want you to make it short and brief. And people have, and you know, they've asked their questions. And if there was anything else... But I, I had a couple of people that were curious about where was the money going. I said, look, you can't fight a court case in the high court without it costs money. And when people say legal aid, and you're kind of going, no, nah, not in this case. No, you're not going to get legal aid for this. It's just never going to happen. Um, uh, it certainly wouldn't happen. Um, and, um, and they're not going to give you media coverage. So we we need to do things like this to, to make sure people know that there is somebody out there, and I, I will say this now, I, as a proud English woman, to have a proud English man stand up and say, hold up a minute, to bugger with all the EU elections, we've left. What you've done is unlawful. I'm going to fight this in court. I don't understand why nobody else is fighting this in court, Robin. So why do you think that nobody else, and I've got to be honest with you, not Farage, um, not UKIP, not not Gerald Batten, nobody. Nobody has taken up the baton and said, you know what, we need to take this through to the High Court. Why why has nobody else grabbed this and run with this when it is, it is as you say, it's really not rocket science when you look at what Gina Miller did? No, I don't think, I, I don't think it is rocket science. I mean, obviously... I'm looking at it from the point of view of being uh, a solicitor, and I'm a solicitor that does civil, civil litigation, so it's my type of work. Um, I've done quite a lot of cases that have um, sort of constitutional implications, so um, I, 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 I'm already a sort of alive for most of, and aware of most of the issues that apply. And I did read the Gina Miller case when, uh, when we had the judgment on that. Um, and then when I saw the, uh, the actual act, that came out of the Gina Miller case, the EU Notification of Withdrawal Act 2017, I thought to myself, um, that, that, that it was interesting that they had phrased it that way. It was clear in the context of the Gina Miller case, to my way of thinking, that, the, that there was actually no power 
mm-hmm. various others were saying that, um, that, that, that basically if, if there wasn't a, a deal done, then we would be automatically out on that day. Yeah. And one of those people who was saying that was Gina Miller herself. Yes. In fact, um, that, that was um, one, of the, so one of the other articles that I shared where the so I was still alone that. in thinking that we would be out on that day. No. It's just that I've taken it one stage further and I've actually um, got, the, got a court case going uh, to, um, to, to get that confirmed. Um, and, um, you know, that's basically where we are. And, and, and that, is the, that, that is, as far as I'm aware, the only court case. Um, that, um, that is making this point really. Although uh, I did see there was a um, uh, an attempt by um, some people who were being extradited under the European arrest warrant uh, to mm-hmm. claim that um, we were all already out, and therefore the European arrest warrant system had lapsed as well. But they they were struggling right from the start with the point that um, magistrates who deal with these warrants. Aren't, aren't actually empowered to look into the background of it. Um, so, so, what it would you say, bit, though? It, 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 it wasn't really the right platform to, to launch that argument. No. Um, are there any other people that I'm aware of that have even talked about bringing a court case about this issue um, is the Bruges Group of Bill Cash and um, former uh, Conservative MP Barry Legg. Um, but they haven't even issued proceedings yet. They, they just, they've just written a letter, or a couple of letters, actually. I keep seeing somebody typing up the word King's Bench. Okay, they said, do you know what the King's Bench is? That doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know if it means anything to you. I don't know well, if it's it, relevant. It, 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 we, we, we're part of, one of the divisions of the High Court is um, when, when we've got a king on the throne, it's called the King's Bench, and when we've got a queen on the throne, it's called the Queen's Bench. So obviously at the moment it's called the Queen's Bench. But we, we are, the, the division of the court that we're in um, is the administrative court. It used to be known as the Crown Office, but um, there's been quite a lot of tinkering with um, the way that the courts work over the last 20 odd years. And, and now the, the proper court to deal with this type of application or any other judicial review application is the High Court Administrative Court. And that's where we are. Okay, right. So, is there anything else that you think that people on here there is? There's, a, I think there's about a hundred or maybe just over a hundred people on here watching right now. And other than me, me pleading and saying because I'm not afraid to say it, I know Robin personally. He's one of the most honourable men I know. Uh, he's one of the most honest men I've ever met. He is passionate not just about his country. He is passionate about Brexit. And the fact that we did vote to leave. And he is passionate about democracy. And if we can do just, look, like I said, there's 17.4 million people out there being sold out by this government. And if they all put in a pound each, he would have enough to, to have the full legal team that he needs. Yes, more than enough if that happens. Yes. And at the moment, we've got 105 people on here. If 105 people could donate whatever you can afford, whether it be a pound, a pound 50, or 150, whatever you've got, because I have seen, I'm sorry, I've got to say it, I've seen people raise thousands in three days, you know, for causes that I don't think are as important as this. (laughs) This, to me, is one of the most important cases that this country, and if you win, then you win, and and we get back that pride that's being ripped away from us, which is how I feel right now. I feel like we're all of the pride that we we had, we felt when we voted leave, and we felt that we'd achieved that, is being ripped away from us. And I would ask everybody that is on here now to please go on to www.engdem or ingdem.org or you can go to English Democrat is it English Democrat dot org Robin Democrats yes. English Democrats dot org no dot party sorry dot party see I've got a memory like a sieve English Democrats dot party English okay. Democrats dot party and if you can donate to that and help as much as you can we 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 we, we, we 
So we need to get through this uh, phase where we're, we're being blocked by the mainstream media. Um, as, and so obviously that's making it uh, much harder to raise money than it would be if um, yeah. we were getting the same kind of coverage as Tina Miller's case. Yeah. And you are right that this, that this could well be one of the most important cases ever dealt with by the courts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's why they're ignoring it, Robin, because if you win this case... We're out. We're out. End of. Right. There is no discussions. They, they, they'll have to start organising world trade and, and w, WTO and all of those things. And that's why you've got Trump coming over in support of of our Brexit and saying to us, look, we, we you know, America is your ally. We, of course we want to trade with you. And yet we're being sold out because the media don't want to cover you. The radios, I mean, I don't know if George Galloway will be interested in having you on. I mean, I know he's pro-Brexit, even if I'm not overly keen on the money myself. But I would say get wherever you can get um, heard or get a voice, uh, whether it's RT or whether it's LBC, then that's where we need to get you because they are blatantly now, blatantly ignoring you. Well, we had a very um, good example of that, actually. Uh, the, w- one of the people who have been helping try to raise um, awareness uh, actually knew the uh, person who runs the um, mail online, the Daily Mail's online uh, organisation. And um, basically they started running um, reporting about this. They did, I think, two articles about it. And uh, the second article was, was an article where they had actually asked uh, Lord Justice um, Sir Richard Aikens about his views and he, and he had said well, he repeated what he had already said, which was that um, he thought it was strongly arguable. That we well, people out. are asking, obviously, that they have got concern, you know, how can we be sure the court itself is trustworthy, i.e., how do you know you won't get a judge that's a, a pro remain? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd say to anybody who asks that, um, we're, we're 100% more likely to succeed if we're in the fight than if we're not. That's exactly um, it. You've got to, you've, you've got to at least course, be willing to try. There's, there's no certainty in anything that people say that's uh, certainty of death and taxes, but but uh, nothing else. Um, but if we're not if we're not going to struggle for it, then there is an absolute certainty that um, it won't happen. Uh, so our our only chance, and I think that I really do think that this is our, in fact our only chance of getting out. I, I think I think the the remainers within Parliament will make it impossible for us to get out if they're left to their own devices. Uh, the EU itself will probably um, be more than happy to agree for there to be a further uh, referendum. That referendum will certainly be uh, dealt with on a, on a, on a, on a basis whereby uh, the choice is really the, the horrible Theresa May so-called deal um, or remain. Uh, it, won't, it, it won't be a fair choice. Um, it probably won't be fairly balanced in terms of where, where, how the money is spent either, just the same as it wasn't last time, but it would probably be even worse. And um, the whole situation will be designed to make sure that we vote to remain in. Um, and um, there's no, there, there really won't be any other way out. Um, Apparently said, this um, was... Short, short, uh, short of... Uh, somebody's just said that... Sort of things that are going on in, in France at the moment. Okay. Yeah, that well... I mean, I think that that's what we could end up heading towards if she keeps selling us out the way that it she could, has it been. Could be. Yeah. But well, so somebody's just so said apparently the, this the, was the mentioned thing. on Sorry. LBC. Apparently this was mentioned on LBC at 3 a.m. Oh, that's a good time to mention it. 3 a.m. when most people are sleeping. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, well done, LBC. You covered it at 3 a.m. We're really appreciative. Could, could I, could I, anyway, I was, I was telling my story, wasn't I, about the um, Mail Online. Mm. Uh, because uh, they covered it twice. Apparently, it was the most trending story in politics for, um, for the, 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 the um, hours that they were covering it. Um, and then he was told to drop it by the new editor, who, of course, is a Remainer. Um, uh-huh. And um, I understand also the um, Express that, could, that started to cover it. They were told to drop it by their new owners, the Mirror. So uh, it, it, it isn't an accidental blocking. It is perfectly deliberate by the remainder.
are dominated media. They do not want this story talked about. They know they'll have to talk about it. Once you get a court date, once you get a court date, they're going to have to talk about it, aren't they? Well, I don't know whether they'll talk about it when we got the court date. Um, I think I think they they might still be saying at that point that they're they're not going to cover it because it's it's uh, not it's not become a sort of fact, as it were. Um, I mean, uh, that's sort of what what um, the uh, BBC Home Affairs editor was telling me that he, he although he he received hundreds of complaints about the, their bias in not covering this, um, that at the moment he wasn't going to going to um, cover it because uh, we haven't got, yet got the the permission. But I would just point out that Gina Miller's case, they didn't get the permission until the actual hearing. Uh, and yet, you, you, you for, for a couple of months before the hearing, uh, we could hardly get onto our uh, radios or televisions um, without hearing something about Gina Miller's case. Every day, every day, to the point of, I just, if I heard her name again, I think I'd Yes, yeah, you couldn't breathe. I felt smothered by the name Gina Miller. Of course, uh, the, uh, the thing is, that at that time, the Remainers thought that uh, the Gina Miller case was going to completely stop Brexit. Yeah. Um, and it could have done um, if the Remainers in Parliament had refused to pass legislation to get to serve the notice. And I think that's what they what they thought might happen, that it, that it would be possible for Parliament to block uh, the, uh, the legislation to, to allow uh, the notice to be served. Uh, but when, when the Parliament did actually just pass this very short act, which has, uh, anybody who's interested in the technical points that I'm making should definitely go and look at, and they'll see that that act gives power to, uh, to do nothing else other than to serve a notice um, getting us out of the EU, and that and that notice was served, and that's why she I say needs to start doing another bloody job, then, doesn't she? Because we are out, and and really, it sh- there should be a vote of no confidence. She should be ousted. But I don't right now. I don't necessarily want a general election because the only other option is scrawny IRA IRA lover Corbyn, and I really the thought of that <laughs> man anyway no, near this okay. country. I, I agree that he's quite likely to be elected as the next Prime Minister mm. or, um, um, after the general election, but uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why we've got such a weird situation with Parliament at the moment is because there is the Fixed Term Parliaments Act, which um, Cameron and Clegg brought in. Um, and uh, what that Fixed Term Parliaments Act uh, has created is a situation where normally um, a, um, it's not possible to have a, a general election uh, except once every five years. For that, for, the, for that to change, Parliament, the House of Commons has to pass a, I'm sorry, has to pass a resolution by two thirds of the um, seats in the House of Commons. Mm-hmm. Um, and what that would mean at the moment for there to be a, a, a general election before. 2022 is that at least 100 Conservative MPs would have to vote for unemployment. And um, I leave it to you to imagine how likely that is. Yeah, not well at the moment they do sort of say you know, <laughs> unemployment is at an all time low. Well, zero hour contract yeah, should be bloody well But do they want to um, get an ordinary job, I wonder? <laughs> no, they won't. And, and also, would you employ them? If you were an employer. No. <laughs> I, I think what I would probably I do mean, is... a relatively simple task to do, which is to get it out. And, and they couldn't know, even we, do that? We, we the electorate gave them the, um, the order, and they managed to mess it up, haven't they? Why would you want to employ them? Well, they've not managed to mess it up. They've managed to do exactly what they set out to do, and that is to over, sabotage literally it. sabotage it and ignore the will of the people. And I, 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 I've heard people on Question Time, you were mentioned, somebody raised... Uh, this case up on question time. They did. Um, and, uh, Lucy Wardle. Which was wonderful, but again, you you see the the bias that goes on in even on every program that you watch. There is just she bias. had tried to ask a question about the case, actually, um, and that she put that forward to the BBC, and of course they hadn't um, allowed her to ask that. Um, they they um, however did wind up with her actually be, you know, being allowed to speak and then she seized her opportunity of course I, I'm pretty sure the uh, um, Fiona Bruce 
than the others. They were not very pleased with her doing so, but uh, it, it, it was great to see, yes. And, um, and well done to her. She, uh, she I applaud her. She made the most of it, Absolutely she? she did, and fair play to her for it, because yeah. without people doing that, I mean, I don't know, maybe a few of us ought to sign up and claim that we're completely left-leaning and, and liberal, you know, liberal and LGBTQ, WXYZ rights and everything else and put ourselves forward for the, you know, the BBC question time and all stand up and all ask the same question and all throw out there that you are taking this to the High Court. That would please them, wouldn't it? It, it um, probably wouldn't, but uh, they've got to, they, they have built in a safety valve against being asked questions that they don't like the look of, uh, because uh, when once upon a time Christian Time was live, it's now I think broadcast half an hour after it's been um, actually happened, so they have got time to do a bit of editing. Yeah, that's the other thing. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm not sure whether that would actually work, but um, no, they cut us out not, everywhere. Uh, the radio um, program uh, or any other thing where it's uh, live. Um, well, I'm thinking actually people that asking questions. I've got a few contacts in my emails, as you know. I might actually start putting an email together and seeing if I can get you on all these different podcasts as well. And then it would be worth, I do actually have the email address of Katie Hopkins. Now, I don't know whether she'd reply, but if we could get Katie Hopkins to interview you, that also would... Well, be... I'd be very happy to do so. Yes, I know you would, but that's because you like Katie Hopkins. <laughs> And I've got to admit, I like Kate Yopkins, not because I always agree with everything she says, but by Christ, I agree with her right to say it, even yeah. if I don't always agree with it. But listen, I'm going to let you go, Robin. Thank you very much for giving me your time. Thank you, Danny. And we, we will at some point figure out some way of doing this so people can actually see you as well. It's always nice to put a face <laughs> to, to a voice. Okay. Um, but thank you for answering those questions. And I'm sure that if anybody else has got any more questions they can contact you via the English Democrats. They can go onto your Facebook page, they can inbox you, or they can get... Um, do you have an email address on your Facebook? I do. To contact it's, uh, Robin Tilbrook, one word, at AOL.com. Brilliant. I will also put that out, because then if anybody's got any questions, or if they if they don't use... Um, yeah, why do I get use, thousands of inquiries? I probably shan't be able to handle them. Well, even if you can answer it all and tag them all in and send it out as one just automatic message. But listen, thank you for, for giving me your time and thank you for letting me do this because, like I said, look, I'm beyond you 100%, Robin, as you know. have been thank for a you, long time. I, I, I know, and you, you've been very helpful. Thank you. Well, that's because you're, you're not just Robin Tilbrook with a set of cojones. You are my friend too. So that's why. All right, my darling, listen, I will give you a ring uh, in the next few days. And I hope that the, the donations go up now because it was over 100 people watching. And I hope it goes up and it, it keeps going up. Thank you, Tony. All right, my darling. All right. You take Thank care. You to everybody listening as well. Yes, I will make sure that they know before I go. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, people, that's me done for the night. Um, Andy Devine, if you listen to what Robin said, the King's Bench is is it's not relevant. Go back and listen to what he actually said. Uh, he did answer your question on that. Um, and he's no good flogging a, a dead horse, literally. But listen, I'm not going to stay on any longer. I hope that everybody who's on here, thank you for sharing it out. Thank you for adding people. Um, we had over 100 people. Please, please go to English Democrats dot party to donate or go to www.ngdem.org and donate either way that money gets to robin help robin fight that 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 case help help him fight for what we voted for um and help because if we don't i'm sorry we can't sit there and moan about it if none of us are prepared to put our own money where our own mouths are so everybody, I'm now going to go because I've given up my, my evening with my partner to do this because I thought it was really important that you guys had the opportunity to ask questions. Please share it out. The more you share it out, the more people hear what's said, the better. And all I can say is thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing. Take care. Stay safe.
and have a great weekend. Bye.